Hello, this is Rich Lavens of Watlow, and today we're going to be working with the PM Plus series of temperature controllers. Uh, I happen to have a PM4 Plus, which is the brand new quarter din unit, but it also comes in a PM8, which is an eighth din vertical oriented unit. The PM9 is an eighth din horizontal unit, and then lastly we have the PM6, which is a sixteenth din controller. So let's power this up. So you can see it's got a nice crisp display and once it boots it's going to show you the firmware revision, the instrument number and whether you have Bluetooth enabled or not. Uh, I'm going to show you Bluetooth when we get to the composer section of this so I'll explain that a little further there. So today's tutorial is really how to set up your inputs. So if you'll notice here we have a function 1 and a function 2 key. Uh, those can be assigned different functions. That's going to be another video. We have our home key, the left button, the right button, of course the up and down. So if you notice on the right button there's a little hamburger stack or the menu. So we're going to hit the menu and in our case we want to set up the controller inputs. So we're going to scroll down to set up and if you miss it just back up arrow hit the menu button again. So we want to set up our analog input which is highlighted in red so we're going to hit the menu button again. This particular unit has two inputs they set up identically so we're just going to set up input one. So here you can see the sensor type I am set up for an RTD but if I want to change that I would hit the menu and here's all my different sensor types. So we have thermocouples, millivolts, volts, milliamps, RTD 100 ohm, RTD 1000 ohm, and then lastly uh, a 1k potentiometer. So um, I have an RTD hooked up to this so we're going to leave it there. If I did want to switch it to a thermocouple though I want you to be aware that once you select a thermocouple, so we'll do this, hit the menu, there's your different types, so K's, J's, so forth. The minute you touch that it's making that change immediately on the controller so there's no hesitation there's no prompt like do you want to do this so just be aware as you're changing this it is going to change on the fly so once we enter that uh, thermocouple type it's going to have another display saying your analog input filter so this filter is basically how quickly the screen updates we've got this set to half a second uh, if you're using maybe like a um, oh, an infrared thermocouple, those things tend to change very rapidly and sometimes the display just jumps around. So if we wanted to uh, dampen the response time, we could take that out to a second or whatever. Uh, but in our case, we're going to leave it at half a second, so we're going to enter. Um, the input error latching right now, highlighted red, I have it on. What the input error latching is, if your sensor breaks and is reestablished, if you have the input error latching set to on, somebody's going to have to come over and acknowledge that they understand the thermocouple or RTD or whatever, their, their input sensor was broken. If you don't want to do that, we could just set that to off. And you can see now it's highlighted here. Now, if your sensor input breaks and someone you know fixes it, there is no reason to come back over and acknowledge the issue. So it's really just do you want to acknowledge you had an input error or not? So we'll leave it off. Our precision display, that is your decimal points. Certain industries require that you have a decimal, some others don't, so you can again choose what you want here. We'll leave it as whole numbers though. Menu again. This is our calibration. So when you're out in the field, maybe you take a measurement at the thermocouple and it's 200 degrees. But your controller is reading 198 because you've got you know, a couple hundred feet of extension wire there and you've got some signal loss. So you can offset this negative or positive. So in the scenario I just mentioned, thermocouple we know is 200. This is reading 198 we can put in a plus two. So that will equalize that reading and that is a plus two degree through the entire range. So just be aware of that. Oops. Menu again. This is our actual reading off the thermocouple or sensor. This would tell you if you had an error. We don't have any. 
And really, that is how you would set up a thermocouple or RTD. So let's go back in here, though, and set up a different type of sensor. So we're going to do this. Let's set up a milliamp. So milliamps could be a variety of different um, sensors. It could be a pressure or a level. It could be a temperature, too. So let's go ahead and do milliamp. We want this as process, so we're going to do that. So what is our scale low? So the scale low would be the electrical signal. So it's defaulted as 0 to 20, but more commonly I would say 4 to 20 milliamps would be the norm. So we'll put in 4, four milliamps. Oops. And the longer you hold the button, the quicker it goes. So you've got to be a little quick on that. So 4 on the low end. Enter. There's 20, so 20 milliamps, so that's your electrical signal, 4 milliamps and 20 milliamps. Now typically, you don't want to display a 4 to 20, so say we want to do 0 to 100 as the representation. So here's what the 4 equals. 4 right now equals 0, 20 right now equals 500. So if I put in 4 milliamps, it's going to read 0. If I put in 20 milliamps, it'll read 500. So that's how you scale a 4 to 20. So we can back out of here again. I'm going to set this back to RTD because that's what I've got hooked to it. So we'll go up to sensor type and we'll put in 100 ohm RTD. And really once you're done with that you can hit the left arrow and back out or you can simply hit the home screen and go back home. So let's uh, go back. It got that error because I switched between a couple different thermocouple types. It takes a second to reset. So anyway, let's jump over to Composer now. And I'll show you how to do it using the software. Okay, so I'm here at my PC, and let's fire up the Watlow Composer software. So Watlow Composer is a free download from the watlow.com website. And once you get it downloaded and installed, it looks something like that. So the first thing you're going to see is right here, we have already detected... Uh, a PM4 Plus out there using the Bluetooth feature. So regarding Bluetooth, Bluetooth is a super cool feature on the controllers. Um, when you order a controller, you order it with Bluetooth or without. If you order it with Bluetooth, you can always disable it in the setting. If you order the controller without Bluetooth, it will never have Bluetooth. The, the chip is not physically there. Uh, there are some industries that just don't want you to use Bluetooth, and uh, you just have to kind of ask your customer or ask yourselves or your IT department if, if you want that feature or not. So again, mine has it. It's already enabled. So let's click on this controller. You can see it opens a tab for the controller. So if you have multiple controllers out there, you'll have a list of different controls. Uh, I just happen to have one here. So let's go to that particular control. And we'll wait for this to uh, download it. The, the other kind of neat thing with uh, the Bluetooth enabled is there is a f an app for your phone called EasyLink. So everything we're going to do through the front panel or at my PC, if you download that phone app, EasyLink, uh, you can do it right through your phone as well. So here's our instrument. We're going to click here. And you see when I click there, I have different things I can look at. So... I have device details, just tells me a little bit about the instrument. You can rename the instrument if you want here. So the function block, uh, that's very similar to uh, its, its cousin's product on the Eurotherm side called iTools. We can personalize the controller. Again, that's not what this video is, so I'm not going to spend any time on that. There's a trend function. And then lastly, let's go to the Explorer. This is more similar to the button pushes on the control. So we would set up the controller by clicking Setup. Here's our analog input. So let's click there. Set up analog input number one. So here is the milliamp example I had. So in milliamps, there's the 4 to 20 electrical signal I configured the instrument for. There's my range. Here, I can use process, I can use temperature, there's different settings within that, but for ours, we're just going to look at the process value. Also notice here, 
there is a type J thermocouple here, but if you'll notice, it's kind of grayed out. So anything with bold font are the parameters that are relevant to your sensor type. So right now, the linearization is not being used, but let's go to my thermocouple. And now you can see other things got grayed out, but the ones pertinent to your thermocouple settings are there. So we can set that up for a type K. Here is our process error enable. Here is our filter time that we talked about earlier. Here's our input error latching. Here's our decimal point, and there's that calibration offset. So again, real, real straightforward. And again, if you have any questions, there is a very nice help menu right off to the side. Now I have an RTD hooked up to mine, so I want to set that back so I get a reading. So here's an RTD, thermocouple linearization, now grayed out. But I do have an RTD lead, so I could have a two or a three wire RTD. Mine happens to be two. The scale and ranges, again, all this is grayed out because it's not relevant. Here's my filter time, the input error latching, decimal place, and calibration offset. So really, that is about it as far as setting this up. Alternatively, if I come back up to the function block diagram, there's my input, so universal input one. If I click here, you'll see it's another way to do the same thing. So here's everything I just showed you. So you could do it either from the function block or from the Explorer, makes no difference, or from the face of the controller, or if you have Bluetooth enabled, you could use the Easy Link. Anyway, I hope you find this valuable, but uh, please drop us a line or give us a call and let us know what you think. Thank you so much. Bye.